Good morning or afternoon, everyone. My name is Jeremy Walsh, and I'm the Director of Support, Training, and Documentation for BNI Connect. I would like to welcome everybody to the webinar today. Uh, today's webinar is on the member tools and reports in BNI Connect. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to go a little bit deeper into the system and show you some of the things that you can access, um, both from a chapter standpoint and from a reporting standpoint that I believe that they can really be beneficial to your membership, um, both from statistical purposes to being able to send out a visitor invitation, to being able to email your chapter, and to be able to look a little bit deeper into your own membership to find out, you know, really, for example, who's your best referral giver um, or who is giving you the most money in BNI. So these are all things that we can find out, again, just by digging a little bit deeper into BNI Connect. Before we get started with today's webinar, just a couple of housekeeping things, and that is that this is a live webinar. So if you have any questions whatsoever, please do feel free to ask those questions as we're going through. The easiest way to ask those questions is to please type your question into the questions panel. I'll see that pop up on the screen and I'll be able to answer it as we're going through. If it's something that's completely and totally unrelated, then I will definitely save time at the end for questions and answers. We are scheduled for about 30 minutes worth of content. I like to be respectful of everybody's time. I know that uh, people have busy lives and clients to get back to, um, so I do try to keep this to about a half an hour for the content portion. That being said, if you have any questions, I will be happy to stay on the webinar as long as you want to until every single question has been answered. This webinar is also being recorded, so if you do need to re, uh, refer back to it later or you would like to share this with other members of your chapter and members in your region, you can do that. Uh, it will be stored in a couple of different places. Uh, the first place is if you click on this question mark in BNI Connect, the one in the upper right-hand corner, that will take you to the support site. On the support site, you'll see our list of upcoming webinars, and you can see the link here. The webinar was recorded. You can click there or scroll down to chapter training. And we categorize them all. We catalog them in month by month by month. So for example, if you want to take a look at the April full series of webinars, you can take a look at them here. You can watch them right here, or you can go directly to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash BNI Connect Global. And once you get there, you'll see our entire collection of BNI webinars, as well as things like educational moments, short three to five minute videos that you can use um, when you're educating your chapter. All right, so let's go back and take a look at these member tools and reports. Now, the first thing that I want to show you guys is that there are some reports right here on the home screen that you may or may not have um, dove into before. Uh, the first of which is that you will notice at the top of the form here, right next to My BNI Business, there is a link here that says My Personal Participation Report. Now, this is a great way to jump right in and look at your statistics. These are statistics regardless of whether or not you're using the online slips. Um, as you may or may not know, you can pass your slips online through BNI Connect, and when you do that, we record a lot more information for you. However, regardless of whether you're doing paper slips or online slips, the My Personal Participation Report, what that will do is take all of the POMS reports for the past year and just take your name out of them. So it'll show you your week by week activity. So we can see here that it has um, all the different columns for the POMS report. Oh, I apologize there. I think I just had a little blip in my internet, but I think I am back now. Um, but as we can see here, it has the meeting date, and then it has all the different columns from the POMS report. So it has your attendance. RGI stands for referrals given inside or member to member referrals when one member uses another member for their services. 
then referrals given outside when you introduce somebody else to a referral partner. Then there's also referrals received inside and outside, V for visitors, one-to-ones, thank you for closed business and CEUs. Now you can see week by week what your activity was. And then also at the bottom, it will give you a list of people that you've sponsored into BNI in the past year, as well as the different training events. This is also great if you ever think that there might be a discrepancy in, <clears throat> in the reporting. Maybe you were marked as absent when you shouldn't have been, or perhaps uh, you think you had more referrals or um, something else. If you can find the week where the discrepancy is, for example, you may say, oh, you know what, I wasn't absent on April 30th. I can go back and realize that, you know what, maybe my sub didn't show up or maybe I did have a substitute that week. So I can work with my vice president on making sure that that gets corrected. So this is the personal POMS report or the My Personal Participation report. Now, on the home screen while we're still here, there's a couple of other things that you may not have um, realized with the SLIPS program. Now, again, if you are turning in your SLIPS online, then you'll be able to also go back and review the details of all of those SLIPS. And to me, this is a huge benefit to your membership in that it can tell you things about your return on investment. Uh, let me just give you an example. I've been using the online slips since they came out in 2012, so I'm starting to really collect some good data now. And I wanted to know really who is my best referral source. Now, I am a member. I'm a member um, of the BNI Wakefield chapter. I've been a member since 2002, so coming up on uh, 13 years of membership. And when I look back, and I review my thank you for closed business slips. If I go back to when I first started submitting these, which was back in 2012 or so, what this will tell me is all of the details of those slips that I have put in for the past couple of years. Now, this is great because when we just passed it in on paper, I would lose track of this particular detail. But now that we're doing it online through BNI Connect, I can follow along with this. And what's great is that I can sort this by amount and see what my biggest thank you for closed business were, for example, or I can sort this by name. And this will tell me really who am I giving the most thank you for closed business to. You know, and I can see here, you know, what I should be seeing is the people from my contact sphere, my power team. And when you look at this, are you seeing those people from your contact sphere, from your, from your power team? Or who are your best referral sources? And this really can bring a, to light a lot of really interesting information. Uh, for example, you know, when I was looking through this, I realized that one person on here in particular, her name is Angela Moon. And Angela Moon, she's the mortgage broker in my chapter, and I'm the computer guy, so the two of us don't really do a whole lot of business together um, as far as referrals go. However, she passed me two referrals about five years ago. I don't know if we've really passed any referrals since then, but five years ago, she gave me two referrals in a row. One was to her mortgage company that was looking to get their IT services quoted out, and another was to a fencing company that was like a brother's, uncle's, best friend's, niece's, nephew's, you know, something or other. So when I looked at this, I've been submitting the thank you for closed business, you know, every quarter or annually, just keeping up with the recurring revenue. And what I realized was that these were generating somewhere in the vicinity of 35 and, you know, $22,000 per year in revenue. That's about $60,000 a year in thank you for closed business. And this is somebody from that's not even in my power team. So it made me realize that you know you really have to look and be sure that you're keeping up and thanking your referral sources, not just the ones that you're assuming that you're getting the most business from, but the ones that are consistently generating business for you time and time and time again. Um, Kimberly says, how do you determine who is in your power team? Um, for that one, I would say definitely talk to your director consultant, but just in a very quick explanation. Your contact sphere is the people that are naturally in the same types of businesses that you 
tend to refer a lot of business back and forth. So, you know, I'm a computer guy, so that would be the web designer and maybe the internet provider and the copy salesman and um, people like that in the technology sphere. Now, what makes that different from a power team is the power team is really the people that you are actively working with, that you are meeting with regularly outside the meeting and things like that. So it, it's really the same the same concept, but rather than a passive thing, it's an active thing. At least that's how it's always been de defined in my region. So does that help, Kimberly? All right. Now, talking about power teams and meeting with people, that's the other thing that this can do, is that if you look at your, for example, review my one-to-one -one slips, I can now go back and look at all the details of my one-to-one -one slips over the course of, again, since I started recording the details a couple of years ago. So I can see who am I doing the most one-to-ones with? Who haven't I met with in a long time? You know, a lot of times we can go to our chapter meeting and we can look across the room and say, hey, you know what? Um, it seems like I haven't gotten a referral from uh, you know, Greg Bressler in a long, long time, or I haven't been able to give Greg Bressler any referrals in a long time. I can go back to this list and say, hey, you know what? Looking at this, I haven't had a one-to-one -one with Greg Bressler since the 3rd of June last year. That's a year since I've sat down and met with Greg. You know, if I want to be doing more business with him, I should probably get together with him more often and have those one-to-ones. So again, look through these. As soon as you start um, tracking more details, it will reveal more information about your membership. So let's take a look. We're going to go a little bit deeper now and take a look at some of the other tools and reports. There's just a couple of tools that I want to show you real quick that's available at the chapter level. Now, in order to get to some of these tools, we have to go past the home screen and go into these menus along the top. You'll see I have network operations, reports, tools, and admin. Now, most people will only see the network operations and reports. The way I remember where to find stuff is network is going to be all the social media stuff. Now, we have a whole webinar dedicated just to that, but that's where you're going to do your, your connections and your testimonials, the discussion groups, things like that. Operations is always going to be input. So if you want to create something, you want to do something, you're looking for a specific tool, usually you're going to find it under operations. Reports is always going to be output. So if you're just looking for statistics, that's usually the place to go to. So let's take a look first under the operations menu. Now the operations menu is usually where the leadership team lives a lot. This is where they're gonna to go to enter their POMS reports and enter the speaker rotation and enter the mentor pairs, the mentor and the mentee pairs, things like that. But there's a couple of things here that you can use at at a member level as well. Um, one of those things is this create email function. Now, if you've ever need to get a message out to your entire chapter, this is an easy way to do that. What you'll find under create email is this first option here it says email my chapter. And under email my chapter, what this does is this will always give you the most recent distribution list for your chapter members. All I need to do is highlight this and copy it and then start up my own email program, whether that's Outlook or you're using Gmail or something like that, I do always recommend pasting it into the BCC line. That way you don't get a whole bunch of you know, reply alls that get sent around and just fill up everybody's inbox. It also keeps all of their email addresses private in case somebody decides to forward that message out uh, beyond the chapter. And contrary to prop popular uh, belief, you do not have to have anything in the two line. Everything can be in the BCC line. Just give it a subject and some content and click send. Now you can be sure that it's going to all of the right people and has all the new members as well as um, excludes the people that have recently dropped from the chapter. There's another great function under here, under the create email, called email visitor invitation. Now, what this one does is it allows you to send out a custom email invitation to somebody that might want to come visit. So a lot of times when we're out networking and we say to people, um, hey, why don't you come and visit my chapter? It tends to be a very uh, informal invitation. This makes it a little bit more formal. And it has a nice branded image that goes along with it. So if we go to email visitor invitation, 
it's kind of like a little BNI Mad Libs, if you will. You're just going to put in a little bit of info. I'm going to put in John Smith from Smithco. And what I'm going to do, and if you want to test this out yourself, just go ahead and put in your own email address. We're not saving this information. We're not compiling a giant email address list or anything like that. It's just a means of sending out a templated email. So I'm going to put in my own email, jeremy at the right click dot net and put in a personal message. So I could say something like, you know, following up on a verbal invitation, for example, uh, it was great meeting you at the chamber event. I would love to introduce you to my referral partners. Then I click send. It wraps this up in a nice little package. It puts a bow on top and then it delivers it to whatever email address you have listed there. So I should get that in my email right about now. And here it is. So here's the message that was sent out. You can see it as a nice BNI graphic at the top. It puts in Dear John, and then it has my information here. It was great meeting you at the Chamber event. I would love to introduce you to my referral partners. It then automatically fills in the information about my chapter. So the BNI Wakefield chapter, we meet at the Elks Club. We're located at 60 Belmont Avenue on Thursdays, 7 a.m., Let's them know that we are a business organization, a professional organization. We're looking for a person in your profession and to please RSVP. And if they hit reply on this, it will go to my email address that's on record. All right. So let's take a look at some of the reports now you know there's plenty of other things under the tools there's the news functionality there's a chapter goals program um, there's registering visitors for upcoming meetings but I want to make sure that we review a couple of the reports that are available as well uh, we do have a quick question here from Mary uh, Mary says who inputs the paper slips if we place them online will it make a duplicate so the there's two ways that you can do slips um, going and I'm um, assuming that you're um, just coming onto the system from one of the new countries, uh, Canada, or, um, or if you're a new member in a chapter. So when you submit slips online through BNI Connect, again, that's done through the home screen. And what that'll do is that will actually take those slips and put them into the POMS report for that week. So when you do get around to the chapter meeting that week, what you want to do is you want to announce the information but you don't necessarily need to turn in a paper slip for it because that's already been recorded. If you do turn in a slip for it, that's perfectly fine. Um, what you need to do is just put a little X through it to say, you know, this has already been entered online. In addition to that, your vice president will see that information in the POMS report already, and they have an audit report to make sure that they're not duplicated. So does that help, Mary? If not, well, we can uh, go over that in more detail at the end of the webinar. So just flag me up with, a, with another question. All right. All right, so let's take a look at some of these reports. So I'm going to go to reports and then the chapter level reports. And there are a ton of reports here at the chapter level. In most regions, um, members have access to all of the reports. However, if you see a report here that I'm showing that you aren't seeing on your screen, um, don't panic. Just talk with your regional office, with your executive director or your director consultant. Um, it is something that is defined at a regional level. Now, I'm not going to go through all you know, 15 or so reports here. Uh, we just don't have time to go through them all. I'm just going to go through a couple of my favorites. Um, that being said, you can't really break anything in reports, so do feel free to go through and just click through a bunch of the reports to see what information they show you. If you do have any questions, just feel free to ask your director consultant or shoot an email over support at bniconnect.com and we will be happy to help you and explain what it's all about. You can also always click on this little question mark in front, for example, the personal POMS report, which is the same report that's on your home screen. You can click the question mark here 
and it will take you to a custom help document specifically on that report and it will explain what the report means and how to access it and what to do with it so that will help as well all right so let's show you a couple of my favorite reports now the second report on the list here is the chapter roster report now this one's pretty straightforward um, has what you would expect it to have in it it has the chapter roster but Aside from just the chapter roster, the thing that I constantly use this for is that it does show you your leadership team, who your director consultant is, and how to get in touch with them. You know, for example, uh, my this is my personal chapter. We just got a new director consultant, John Lucas. So now I can access his phone number here if I need to give him a call, welcome him to you know, joining the leadership of our chapter and if I have any questions for him. Same thing with the membership committee or the educational coordinator. If you have some suggestions for the educational coordinator, you can look in this list. Now let's say that you are a position. Let's say that you are the mentor coordinator um, and you go and you try to assign a mentor mentee pair and you realize that the function's not there. This is where you can check as well to make sure that you are officially assigned that role in the chapter. Um, that if you are not listed here, for example, our educational coordinator is not listed right now. Um, that means that you wouldn't have the permissions to certain functions that would be assigned to that position. And then of course it does have your chapter roster, has how many members your chapter has, and it has all the members, their classification, and what the company is, and the phone number, and a brief view of the POMS report. Jumping down a couple of reports, one report that I want to show you is the meeting notes report. Now, this is one of those reports that's pretty straightforward and simple when you look at it. However, um, it has some pretty important impl implications. This is one of those reports that can help you to be a better referral giver. Now, everybody likes to show up to a meeting and get a referral, but the fact is, is that people have to be giving those referrals in order for other people to receive them. So it's a good idea to make sure that you arrive with a referral, and this can help you with that. The meeting notes report, what this is, is if I click go, all it does is give me the name and the company name of everybody in the chapter. And this report was really designed to be just printed out. So I can click print here, and what this does, I can either you know, look at it in portrait or landscape mode. It really just gives me a place to write down notes during the meeting. One of the best ways you can become a better referral giver is to pay attention when people are giving their weekly presentations at the chapter. And it, I'm, my chapter has 48 members in it. There is no possible way that my short-term memory will allow me to remember all 48 members weekly presentations and what they're asking for so we use this in our chapter we print out about 55 or so copies of it we leave it in front of everybody's uh, place around the tables and some extras for visitors and we're able to take notes during the chapter meeting now, if you don't like the layout of this, you don't like the format of it, don't panic. All of the reports in BNI Connect can be exported to Excel. So all you need to do is click one of these export buttons at the top. We have export without headers and export. What export means is it will include everything you see here on the screen. Export without headers, what that'll do is it will exclude this top information and just have the data. So for example, we would click export without headers. I can then open this up in Excel. And now I have full control over it. For example, one thing I love is to click on format as table. I can choose a little color scheme here. And now this allows me to do some fancy sorting and filtering and all sorts of stuff like that. It also allows me to, I can then go in and say I'd like more space to take notes. I'm gonna bring that out. I can then take the notes field and bring that out. And now I have 
a much nicer sheet that I can use and be able to always have, again, the most updated information. I know some chapters that are doing this manually that every week they end up you know, changing it to put in the new members manually and take out the old people manually and it gets to become cumbersome. This is just an easier way to get the information quickly. The next one I want to show you is the classifications not in chapter report. Again, the summary POMS report, fairly straightforward. It's just your stats for the chapter. Absence report will shows, show everybody's list of absences. But the classifications not in chapter report, this one's just kind of neat. Now, I like this one. I click go. I like this one because it shows us what categories we don't have in our chapter but that are very popular in our region. Again, the chapters that the, the classifications that are open in my chapter that are also very popular in the region. So for example, we actually just lost our printer a few weeks ago. He resigned. So we now have an opening for printing services. Now what I can see is that of the 20 or so chapters that are in my region, nine other chapters, about half of the chapters in my region, already have this position filled. Now that tells me a couple of things as a member. First of all, it tells me that, number one, it is a popular category. So when I'm approaching printers to invite them, I can tell them, yeah, you know, you may have a hard time getting into a chapter because it's a very popular category in our region which also tells me I'm not going to be competing with other chapters. So, I mean, if you're in a, a fairly large region and you're an underwater basket weaver, you can pretty much jump around from chapter to chapter and have your pick of chapters. But if I'm a printer, I'm going to have a harder time getting into a chapter, which means that you can also get higher quality people. What some chapters have done as well is the other benefit to this is that it will show you every single profession that is in BNI somewhere around the world. You'll see that this list is very, very, very long. And if you've ever thought to yourself, I have invited everybody I can think of and there's nobody left I can think to invite, just take a look at this list. So, I mean, a plasterer and web consulting, sales coach, event planner, um, title service, um, you know, on hold messaging, there's just, there's tons and tons and tons of categories that you may not have thought of before. So definitely take a look at this report and some chapters have just taken this and cut it into pieces and handed it out to chapters and said, here, invite somebody from this list. Um, Samaya says, can you please repeat that? Um, which part please? All right, we're almost at the bottom of the hour, but just one other quick report that I want to show you guys is this member details report. Now, one of the things that we're taught is that when when we have a one-to-one -one with somebody, we should be doing what's called the gains exchange. So if you think back to your member success program, the gains exchange is when before you sit down and meet with them, you take your gains profile and you share it with each other. That allows you to get to a deeper conversation faster. Now you can do that, you can always look up somebody's profile, but you can also get somebody's bio and their gains and everything else. This is especially true if we happen to have any secretary treasurers on the call, but you can go to the member details report and click on view member gains. So pick the person from your chapter that you're having the one-to-one -one with, and hopefully they've filled out their profile in BNI Connect. And if they filled out their profile, you would then have their gains, their goals, their accomplishments, their interests, their networks, and their skills. And you can also view their bio right from this report. You can view their TOPS profile. And if you want to, you can even review their weekly presentations. So this is all great information in order to be able to get to know somebody very quickly quickly on a deeper level. 
All right, so we are at the bottom of the hour. What I'd like to do is um, I'd like to open this up to any questions. And for those of you that do need to leave right away, what I'd like to do is thank you guys for your time. Thank you for being here. Um, this webinar is being recorded. Um, it will be available both on the YouTube channel as well as on the support site. And I guess we have a couple of notes that uh, the sound went out a little bit. I'm not sure where uh, you guys lost it, um, but it's back now. So uh, Amber has a question. She says, does this count towards training credits and how do I log them? Uh, if Yes, this does count as a CEU. So what you do is you go back to your home screen. And on your home screen, click on Submit CEU. And this one would count as a BNI webinar. So this is worth one credit. So go ahead and give yourself a one credit. Now, if yours doesn't say BNI webinar because this is uh, language related, then this is roughly equivalent to the amount of hours that you spend on one of these different trainings. So I'm going to go ahead and click Submit, and I would have submitted the one credit for this. All right. <clears throat> So again, uh, if I'd like to open this up to questions, and as I said earlier, I am happy to stay on this call until every single question is answered. So we have a couple more questions here. Um, Amber says, do I also have to submit a paper slip? So if you submit a slip online through BNI Connect, that will automatically be inserted into the POMS report. It does have to be verified by your vice president but uh, you do not need to submit a, a paper slip as well. However, when you get to your chapter meeting this week, you do want to absolutely stand up and announce the number of CEUs that you had. Uh, Myron asks, would you suggest viewing a member bio before a one-on-one? -on -one? Uh, yes, absolutely, 100%. Before a one-to-one, -one, you, you definitely want to look up the person's information. Now, if you are in the same chapter with them, you can do that by going to your connections because you'll automatically be connected to everybody on your chapter. So you can always go to network connections and in your connections, in your list of people, you'll see everybody that you've manually connected with as well as all of the people in your chapter. So all you need to do at that point is click on their profile, and then you can view their full profile. So you can see some information here, but then you can go and view their full profile and look up all of their information. Of course, you can always use that bio report as well, uh, but once you get to their profile, you'll have access to it here also. If you are not already connected with them, what you can do is click on this magnifying glass in the upper right hand corner that should be available from any screen and you can do a search for another member so for example if i was having a one-to-one -one with steve elliott he's on the uh, call with us today i could look up steve's profile and then again this is building credibility with somebody before you even meet with them. So I could look at their gains profile and their weekly presentations. I could see who they're connected to. I could see their testimonials, their photo gallery, any groups they're participating in, and their training history. So hopefully that helps, Myron. All right, I uh, had a couple of questions uh, from Samaya as well. Uh, Samaya asked, how do we get that report? So the reports, again, you go to reports, and then these are chapter level reports, so reports chapter. And the, the couple of reports that I showed, for example, was the meeting notes report. 
and the classifications not in chapter report. Again, there is a ton of other reports here. You know, the summary POMS report, for example, is really your chapter statistics that you can look up for any period of time. There's the absence report, which is going to show you um, basically a summary of people's absences in the chapter. That's great for leadership teams, for vice presidents, for membership coordinators um, to be able to calculate absences and when to send out control letters, things like that. So um, I don't know if that helps, uh, Samaya. Was that what you were looking for? Uh, let's see. David says, where can I find the letters to send for absences? So uh, these are actually controlled by your regional office, and they will have had to have uploaded them. But if they have, the place to find them and a bunch of other stuff is in the document library. The document library is going to be Go back to your home screen and then click on the My Network right here. Here you'll see some of the social media stuff. You'll see connections and groups and testimonials, but there'll also be documents. This is your regional document library where your regional office, your executive director, your regional admins can share files with you that you might need on a regular basis, such as the control letters. <clears throat> so if you just go in and click More, this will show you all of the documents that you have access to and these are filtered based on your level um, so there might be things that are just accessible to vice presidents or certain things that might just be accessible to education coordinators but once you're in here just do a you can do a search for using this refine box but I could do you know search for control and if the control letters are here which they are for my region I would be able to download those control letters there. So, but again, that is uh, something that is done on a region by region basis. So if they're not in here, especially if you're just fresh onto the system, if you're from Canada, Australia, New Zealand, um, Illinois, Northern Virginia, um, then your office might not have uploaded these quite yet. So hopefully that helps, David. All right, um, Sumaya had uh, really another kind of question comment. Um, as a new member, uh, it is very difficult to get visitors. So I think a couple of things that I showed might help you with getting visitors, the visitor invitation, as well as maybe using that classifications not in chapter to find out who you might uh, want to invite. And some of it just comes down to uh, practice and getting comfortable talking with people and talking about BNI. And again, that's something that your executive director, your director consultant for your chapter can really help you with in working on inviting visitors. All right, hopefully that helps, Samaya. Uh, let's see, Myron asks, uh, as a new member of BNI end of membership committee, what is the best way to learn the duties and to work on inviting? Um, again, I, I'm going to have to point you to your regional office on that one. Um, regional, each region is slightly different in how they train various roles and the responsibilities of those roles. Um, so, you know, for example, um, in some regions, um, the secretary treasurer enters visitors into BNI Connect, and in some regions, it is the visitor hosts that do that. And it's very similar with the membership committee um, as to which responsibilities you have and things like renewals and and other aspects. So I do have to defer you to your director consultant or your executive director to get more information on that. So. Sorry to be so vague, Myron, but I hope that helps. All right, are there any other questions? Um, by the way, if you found today's webinar helpful, if you found this format helpful, a good referral for me is to please let other people um, in your region, other people in chapters know about these webinars. I'd love to see you on a future webinar. Our list of webinars can be found on your regional event calendars as well as on the support site. Our very next webinar is going to be uh, tomorrow, uh, Wednesday the 27th, 
And also on Thursday the 28th, we're going to be doing some leadership team things. Uh, the chapter goals is going to be tomorrow. And leadership team tools and reports is going to be on Thursday. So please let your leadership teams know about those, and I'd love to see you here. And finally, I would love it if you gave us a like on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash BNI Connect Global. We do tips and tricks and all sorts of things up here as well, uh, webinar reminders and whatnot. So please do give us a like on Facebook. Uh, Myron said, I did attend training, but it was a lot to remember. I would also check, by the way, here in the document list. Um, I know some regions will put up the roles and responsibilities for various chapter positions up here as well. And some regions also have online training for the positions, um, like such as the online academy or um, the BNI University. Um, Myron asks, do you have to pre-register for webinars or can you go to the webinar on the date? Uh, you do not have to pre-register very early in advance. Um, what I would say is you, know, you do want to jump in at least five minutes before um, because it will bring you through the registration process in order to get connected to the webinar. Um, but you know, up to you know, right at the time that the webinar is starting, you can uh, click that registration button in order to get the link to log on. So. But if you do pre-register, then you will get reminders um, about the webinar. You can also import it into your calendar. I always find that helpful, especially having to deal with multiple time zones. All right, are there any other questions? The only silly question is the unasked question. All right, well, thank you everybody for attending and I look forward to seeing you on a future webinar. Happy connecting.